criteria. And that minimum criteria that has to be met is then equivalent to that of the CAPS curriculum. So the regering in the CAPS curriculum samengestel, Afrikaans and the KABV curriculum samengestel, and gesê, dit is the minimum waaraan enige iemand moet voldoen. Enige iets gelijkstaande of meer is dan aanvaardbaar, maar dan moet mens kan bewys lewe daarvoor. In the junior school environment, it is expected that the parent is doing exactly what the word home schooling is doing. In other words, that the parent is that individual who is taking the responsibility of being the teacher. So in terms of um, being the teacher, it is therefore illegal to send my child to a small tutor center if they are under the age of 16 and expect someone else to be the teacher if that center is not a registered school. So only if they are a registered school can I send my child to that center. Above 16, if I have a group of parents who get together and get a tutor to help the students, etc., that's not a problem at all. But in the junior school, the parent is the primary responsibility holder. On the other hand, the government also knows that it's important then to be able to assess whether or not a parent is complying with what the minimum requirements are. And that is where a service provider comes into play. Now, Brainline is a service provider. And what is expected then is that as a parent, one would look at the curriculum, one would decide what work you want to cover with your child and in what manner you want to cover it with your child. I'm talking now again for the below 16s, but then how do I prove that I've actually done that which is required as a minimum? Who bewys ek? Ek het dit wat as a minimum van my verwag word gedoen. En dit is waar dan weer a curriculum verskaffer, soos Brian Lyle of Fanny Ander, a rol speel. Daar word verwacht dat die assesserings opgestel word dier een gekwalificeerde onderwijzer met die relevante ondervinding en dan ook nagesien word dier so'n onderwijzer en dat hierdie onderwijzer of dan stel onderwijzer afhangend van die vlak dan sal een rapport kan weergee wat rechtvaardig is en wat geldig is en wat met ander woorde so ek my kind wou terugvat na een gewone staatsschool of een privaatschool, maar kom ons dink aan een school, soos ons het ken, met baksteen, en na een baksteen school toe terugvat, dat ek kan bewys dat ek in daar die tyd, terwyl hierdie kind onder my onderrig as ouwer, wel voldoen het aan die standaarde en die vereistes van die curriculum vir hulle specifieke vlak, I'll repeat that in English, so what is expected is that I as a parent, if I want to take my child back to a brick and mortar school, be it a private school, be it a government school, that I would be able to and would have to be able to prove that my child had done what is, what is expected from me. And that is, I've covered the curriculum as required and have therefore completed assessments which have been set by a teacher who is qualified and experienced to do so. And that I haven't just myself as parent decided, I think I've covered the curriculum well enough. So there are many different thoughts about homeschooling. Um, a lot of people unschool, in other words, they don't want to follow a set curriculum. And that is their choice to do so. We don't say they're wrong, but we do say that taking a child who has been unschooled and de-schooled and hasn't followed a set curriculum which complies for that specific age level with all the requirements of the CAPS curriculum is not in a position then to go back to a school and to walk in on an equal foot with all the other kids who've been in the school environment. And that is then where our assessment comes in. And I'm seeing questions that are coming through mm -hmm. in terms of, um, will I be able to take my child back to school? Um, a lot of buzz on, on the um, homeschooling um, Facebook pages and so on, which I'm seeing and watching. 
um, saying that any department of education has to take your child back in. Now, Colleen and I have been through this process where we have had to prove to a department of education that that child had actually complied with all the assessment criteria. And because this child had been with BrainLine, we could do so gladly. So one of the best assurances I can give you is that if you join uh, BrainLine, you are joining us as your service provider who will be guiding you because it's a massive big new world and, it, and it's a scary world. I think I'm often as we get as I guess our skill like accept my kind and it will maybe best for my kind day now not me get a great besluit in baie gevalle op hierdie stadium um, is dit amper paniek besluit want ek is bang, ek sal nie my kind nou wat registeer het school toe nie genadiglik is my kind nie nou op die school gaan daar ouder doen nie so ons sit allemaal met daai en dan vra ons oor hoe gaan ek seker maak dat my kind kan terug gaan school toe so ons by Brainline is by die IEB geakkrediteer so the IEB accredits Brainline just to give you a brief um, cap of how that works because I think this comes into play a lot with deciding on the curriculum that you're going to choose. In South Africa, the standards body is called Umalusi. Die lichaam wat besluit oor die standaarde, word Umalusi genoem. And the National Senior Certificate is therefore also issued by Umalusi. So as ek aan die einde van graad 12 my metrik certificaat kry, of die nationale senior certificaat kry, so mooi groen vorm waarna elke kind toch streef, dan word dit hier Umalusi uitgeruik. Maar vir Umalusi om dit uit te ruik, beteken dat hierdie kinders moes allemaal sekere examens afgeleed en een curriculum gedek het. En om het ons in Zuid-Afrika is, is dit dan die CAPS curriculum wat verwacht word as Umalusi hierdie kwalifikatie gaan uitreik. So if I'm in South Africa and Umalusi is going to um, grant the National Senior Certificate, then it means that I need to have covered at least the CAPS curriculum. There are three different examining bodies. The one is the Department of Basic Education, the Department of Basis Onderwijs. They stel dan die vraagstelle op en administreer al die examens for the state school. So all the state schools will be writing at the end of grade 12 the exams that have been set by the Department of Basic Education. The um, second option then is the IEB, which is the Independent Examination Board. Dit het tot die Afrikaanse afkorting, maar ons gebruik het nooit nie, dis oer. Um, die onafhankelijke examenraad, ek denk nie enige iemand, ek denk as ons vir die IEB noem gaan, dan sê hulle het al vergeet, hulle is oer. Um, so die IEB is die ander examenraad en al die privaatskole in Zuid-Afrika. Amal wat by ISASA geregistreer is, dis die Independent Schools Association of South Africa, um, is allemaal dan by die IEB geregistreer. So as ons dink aan die groot privaatskool groepe, a lot of the agri-tech schools, a lot of the curo schools, um, if we think of the, the schools that we hear of a lot that, that really have these top achievers, St. John's, St. Mary's, St. Andrews, um, Crawford's, Cornwall's, those are the schools that join um, ISASA and then fall under the IEB. Now, Brainline is very proud to say that we have been accredited by the IEB, which means that they look at our methods and our methods specifically of assessment, and they are the ones that give the stamp of approval to us. So anybody who gets a stamp of approval from the Department of Basic Education could then write a matric through the department and end up with an NSD. Anybody who gets the same from um, the IEB can do the same. And then there is a third examining body. Now this third examining body is called Sakai. Sakai works with independent individuals, um, not with schools and doesn't have any formal schools that are part of um, them. It's all small tutor centers and small, small private schools, not any of the bigger groups. So Brainline, most of the homeschooling um, smaller tutor groups would fall under Sakai. Impact falls under Sakai. So Brainline falls under the IB and we're very proud of what we can offer you. So the basic questions, let's split them into the junior school and the high school, is in terms of the high school part, we have virtual classes which are offered 
um, on a daily basis. So we have a timetable, which the students have access to. We have qualified teachers teaching lessons per subject, varying between two to three lessons per week. Um, in grade eight and nine, some of them split English on their own, Afrikaans class and sommige vakke dan op hulle eie in graad acht en nege. And then from grade 10 onwards, they are mixed classes. So dan sal die onderwijzer um, a class aanbied in beide Engels en Afrikaans. Ons herhaal dan ook graag terminologie, so at the minute we have terminology, we'll be swapping between the two during any um, such a lesson. We normally then work on three lessons. Our lessons are approximately 45 minutes long and they are live here and there. There will be some video recorded lessons in some of the very scarce subjects, something like music, for example, which is really a high level subject in grade 10 to 12. There are not enough students to warrant having a full-time teacher, but we do have an outstanding teacher um, who is full-time at one of the big schools and then also does recordings for us for those students. Um, in the junior school, I'll let Gerda explain to you how their classes work. It works slightly differently. In the high school, we then work with a very set timetable, which will have tasks and tests and exams. So, by soort gelijk aan wat jy in a school sal kry. Ons het dan vaste datums vir take en toetse en examens om in te kom. En natuurlijk vir iemand wat ons dit uit van die jaar um, by ons aansluit, is ons dan natuurlijk ook baie meer, um, jy en nou sê Afrikaanse woord vir flexible weg, maar ons is flexible. So if you join us at this time of year, we're very flexible with what we expect you for with the assessments. We, for example, have our June exams starting and because Brainline hasn't been affected by the COVID lockdown, we've just been going continuously the whole time. So looking at um, our uh, high school part and our continuous work that we've been doing, we're just continuing with our normal um, year planner and continuing with our normal assessments. But now obviously, if a student is going to join us now, even if they weren't in IV school, schools, despite what the curriculum may say and what people say should happen, it doesn't happen. And schools do have different ways of, of tackling the syllabus. Uh, onderwijsers op die tijd keer uit sy eie of haar eie gemakkelijkheid of ondervinding voel dat hulle graag een sekere afdeling wil doen voor um, een ander afdeling, terwijl dit weer aan die ander kant vir ons betek keer by een ander school sal hulle dit om die school in te pas en by wat na ander vak gebeur andersom is. So ons weet dat van die studenten wat na ons te kom nie noodwendig precies in die syllabus is waar ons is nie, al was hulle in a IB school. And we take into account, somebody who's been in a different school, or, or be it IB or not, won't be exactly at the same place as our students. Now forcing that student to write an exam right now on everything that we've covered, to my mind, is setting them up for failure. And that has never been and will never be our intention. The whole point of assessment is to point out what is still required and to what level a student has mastered and not failed at what they have been working at. So if you haven't done the same work, then I'm not testing what you've mastered, I'm testing what you've failed at. And that is why exemption will be granted to those students to give them time to catch up on the work. So nobody will have to write an exam on any of the work that they are not ready to write. Grade 12 is a little bit different because there I need to have a very full portfolio to submit to the IEB to show them exactly what work is done. So as iemand in grade 12 van ons te oorkom, dan kyk ons na die werk wat hulle reeds afgehandel het en met daar die werk kan ons dan bepaal of daar van die werkstukke is that we can include in the portfolio for the IEB or whether additional assessments need to be completed. But again, then we'll be flexible with time to assist such students. Ek gaan voor ons na die vraag te oorgaan, gaan ek net vir Gerda vraag om vir julle te verduidelik hoe dit in die laarschool werk, because that's slightly different, and I know we have a lot of parents who, who are interested in the junior school. Gerda, split. Goeie dag allemaal, um, ja, ek hoor in die graad 1 tot 7, en dit werk so'n beetje anders by ons. We also have tasks and tests in, um, each cycle that needs to be submitted and um, we also have cloud school classes but only in Afrikaans, English and maths 
we try to assist the parent because the parent is basically the the learner's teacher um, it's a little bit different with with the junior school they need that contact and somebody explaining them uh, as, as the uh, learning material to them um, they they need somebody with them in the room next to them in front of them to assist so we um, discuss the more important difficult topics in Afrikaans English and maths and then the classes are recorded and posted for you to view again or for the child to view it again and we also have pre-recorded classes in maths it's listed under topics in the different grades so you can choose a topic if the learner struggles with addition or subtraction you just go and pick the topic look at the video watch the video video with the child and get the explanation you can pause and go back and go forward just as you wish wish so yeah we have the classes it's not as uh, many as in the high school we have and only in the three uh, subjects but i'm available via email and the contact person should you experience any difficulty in any other subject and we assist via email then so donkey um someone else also joined in on the panel just want to introduce her colleen Grenier, the ceo of brainline also joined in and i know she is going to answer some questions over to you colleen I must apologize to all my panelists. I took the best questions and I'm going to leave you all the others. So I'm going to start with all of the lovely questions from Marae Lee, from Komotso and from Jan and Sunet. Um, so I am going to speak from that aspect and that is the stuff that I think what everybody is here for. Marake Lee, uh, Lee has got questions on distance education and she says um, the reality is that distance education there is no connection with a teacher. Marake, um, Marake Lee, it, in, the, in theory that could be true but I think what this lockdown has taught us is what technology can do to help us to connect not only with our learners but also with our parents and I am so delighted with the bond that has become so much stronger between us and all of our learners out there. Um, not only are they here for the academic side of, the, of everything that we do, but we also are here for them for psychological support in the shape of our mentor program with um, Lisa Briva that you've just met and all sorts of things that go with that. So I do agree with you, distance education can be alienating. But the lockdown has taught us that there are ways around all of that. And I don't think that will ever change from your on. It has forever changed how we work and it has forever changed the future of education moving forward. Because what we're looking at at the moment is a year, maybe two of what we're currently facing. And the challenge on our side is how do we make the connection with our learners and how can we, um, put down a relationship between us and them on a very personal level. But then let's get to your questions. And it says, how will distance learning influence the marking of my child's work submitted? Miraculously, I think in a very positive way. Because if you're in a classroom and a teacher marks your paper, there may be bias from the side of the teacher. Oh, I do understand. And that's what we very often see when learners come to us as Brainline because we find that the papers, because they are marked by a person who does not know this particular child, it is a very ob objective way of marking a paper. So what happens is that the mark that the learner actually receives is a mark which is a true version of what that, the academic progress of that learner reflects or is reflected in that. So I think it will affect it in a positive way because we find that papers that are marked by teachers sometimes can be biased in a way that a teacher will say, I know what the intention was of this learner. I know what they wanted to say or did not want to say, and therefore I'll just allocate the mark. 
so it's much more objective. How strict are teachers allowing kids to correct themselves? I'm not very sure what you mean with that question. If your question is, do we allow learners to redo a task or an assignment? Under exceptional circumstances, we may. But as Karen rightly said, assessment is not there to tell you how much you failed by, but to tell you by how much you've actually succeeded. So each and every assessment item has been structured in such a way as to teach you and to hone your skills in that particular subject. So no one particular assessment is the be all and the end all of the com complete assessment profile. Do you com communicate to parents if instructions are not followed correctly? Yes, we do, but we very seldom find the need to do so. Our curriculum is very straightforward. Our questions are very straightforward. There are no little kinks or stuff that, there are no hidden agendas or stuff that is tricky to do. Um, and if there is something really, really um, pertinent that we should share with a parent, yes, we do. But they aren't, we're not out there to catch other learners or their parents. We are here to look after their best interests. Komotsu, the virtual classes are conducted on Zoom. Do you allow learners to ask questions during the class? Absolutely. Absolutely, we do. They can ask it just, just the way that you do currently. And this, what you see here, Komotsu, is actually a very good idea of how we do it. Now, actually, I've got a little jacket on and everybody's got a little lipstick on, so we look good for you. Uh, but our learners are at home and they can be in pajamas or they can be in sweatpants or whatever the case may be. And then they can ask their questions on the chat forum like you do currently, or if the teacher allows them to, they can even audibly ask or answer questions. But remember Komotsu, the, the, and that's also with Marake Lee that I can connect with them to say, we've got stotkinus as well, hey? In these Zoom classes, we've got the Stota kids as well. So we've got to be very careful to look at the cohesive or the complete cohort and see to that learners do not interrupt each other and that we work together um, so that everybody gets the most marks that they possibly can have. So Komotsa, we have a lots of fun and this is the kind of classes that we offer and this is exactly how it happens. Jan and Sunai, what is the role of the mama who is a grade 8 kind in homeschool? Shall I, for example, my house routine have to be changed in a certain few hours per day to allocate? Jan and Sunai, yes, you have to. And I said it with great love in my heart. We must change our whole life. And I always say to people, it is just to decide if you are a vegetarian. And that topic you have on Sunday morning to give the price to you is not better. Maar ek weet dit is goed vir my gezondheid en daarom word ek een vegetariër en daarom het ek besluit dit is wat ek gaan doen, want dit is in my gezondheid se beste belang. Die selfde vir jou en jou kind. Ek het gevind, I was a working mom while homeschooling, but because of that, I had to decide, I'm now going to put my laptop aside, I'm going to put my phone aside, and I need to attend my young, to my younger daughter and see to it that my older daughter was doing okay and that they were on par with what they had to do and that they are happy. The connection between you and your child, your emotional connection between you and your child is a wonderful support mechanism for your child. And having that emotional connection means that I've got to attend to my child and I've got to allocate time that I set aside for them Daar is baie mamas en papas wat sê, as ek nou hierdie curriculum koop, gaan my kind okai wees. Ja, jou kind gaan okai wees, maar net omdat jy ook daar is, omdat jy kyk na hulle, omdat jy hulle versorg. Selfs al kom hulle in graad 12. Vandag spesifiek het het met ons gebeur, um, my sien wat hier so in graad 12 is ook in Breinlein, kry op sy skerm die uitslag van een van sy punte, en is een prachtige punt. En sy pa staan achter hom, en hy neem het soms so groot op die skerm af, en hy deel het op die hele familie sy WhatsApp groep. So wat een pretspul was dit nie. Hy was so trots. Toe ek nou nou iets gaan eet daar so in die huis, toe sê hy, ja, en toe sien ek die hele familie weet nou maar van my punte. En wat een plezier, wat een wonderlikheid. En hoe lekker was dit nie vir hom, om daar positieve terug te voer te kry. Nie net van ons wat in die huis is, maar sommer van die hele familie op die WhatsApp groep. So ja, hoe meer ons ons kinders motiveer, hoe meer ons betrokken is by ons kinders in een ondersteunende kapasiteit, 
hoe beter gaan dit met ons kinders, want hulle voel, soos amper soos daar het treinkie wat in die hewe opgaan, ek dink ek kan, ek dink ek kan, ek dink ek kan, en dan kom hy daarboe en dan sê, ek het geweet, ek kon, en dis wat oor het alles gaan. Jan en so nou, wat ek gedoen het, ons het een specifieke tyd gehad, we had a specific time that we started in the morning, how you structure your morning is up to you, and it depends on what fits into your family. Do you like to work a little bit and then go out somewhere? Do you like to work a, bit, a little bit and have tea? Or do you like to work the whole morning and then have lunch at 12? That depends on how you work. Also, take the lead of your child. You may have a child who likes to work intensively over a longer period. And then you may have a different child who likes to work a little bit on this, and a little bit on that. Allow your children to do that. Because at the beginning in my house, I thought that was really weird to work that way and they will fall behind and they didn't they caught up with the curriculum in time for enough to leaving enough time for them to be able to revise before the exam actually took place so i can say however you structure your day make it fit into your family brain line provides you with the blueprint in other words we tell you what should be done by when but we do not tell you on a minute by minute, hour by hour way, what you should do in your home. That's the lacquer from my thuis school. Jy kan dit binnen in jou huis pas, soos wat dit vir jou werk. En ek wil jou aanmoedig, as jy besluit om thuis school te doen, maak jou kind betrokke daar by die besluit. En sê vir hulle, ok, dit is nou wat ons gaan doen, maar wie hulle ouwens, um, hoe gaan jy die ding alleen kan doen? Hoe gaan ons en hoe wil jy dit graag doen? En jylle kinders gaan jylle verras, met die idees en gedagtes van jylle voor een dag kom, en hulle gaan jylle verras, hierdie ook hier in my huis self kan ek vir hulle sê, eerste drie dag was die dek, bekkie maar bykie rond hoor, maar nadat die bekkie bykie gesag het, en hy besef het, maar, tjoe, hy is nou in beheer van sy eie akademiese vooruitgang, sy eie akademiese vordering, manne, toe is die oorfone op die oore, en dit werk, 6 uur 7 in die aand, is hy nog bezig, want hy moet nou inhaal, hy kom van een ander school af nie, is hy nog steeds bezig om videoklasse te kyk en recordings te kyk en allerhande dinge te doen. En in die aand leer op sy bed en hy lees sy voorgeskrewe werk. So, ek is baie, baie trots op hom. Hy het absoluut die ding gegryp en hy hart op daarmee. So, dit werk in ons huis baie mooi en ek wens vir julle alle voorspoed toe en ek hoop het gaan vir julle ook net so prachtig werk. Marekeli, what is your average pass rate? Man, I get excited about that. Many, many years ago, when we just started distance education, Marakali, and we didn't have the technology and uh, internet was only a pipe dream. We started with only tasks and assignments that some people didn't even bother to do. They just arrived to write the, the final exam at the end of the year. And then the CAPS curriculum came along in 2008. And what happened there? They had to do stuff throughout the year, get together a year mark so that they can qualify to be allowed to write the final exam. How awesome was that? Because our pass rate went from 35% in 1993, sounds like an age ago, 65% in 2009. And today, Marekali, I'm proud to tell you that our pass rate, under the guidance of Mrs. Reinecke of assessment aspects, has been 80% for the past three years. Now, Am I proud of Brainline? Of course I'm proud of Brainline. I will forever be proud of Brainline. But I'm more proud of the learners who are part of Brainline because they sit on their own. They only have what we offer to them online. And they did this. They sat down and they did the work. And they achieved a pass rate of 80%. We were only a very small part of it. So actually, it is the kind of learner who enrolls with Brainline that I'm the most proud of because they are here, because they want to be here. They want to be in control of their academics and they want to pass everything. So yes, I'm extremely proud of our learners. For the past three years, they maintained an 80% pass rate. So they blow us away every year and I'm wonderfully proud of them. All right, let's see if there are other questions questions that I've allocated to myself, I became so enthusiastic that I just click, 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 click. Okay, so Liesl, I'm going to pass back to you. Let's see which ones I can allocate to myself again. 
Um, I want to add to one or two things that Colleen has already mentioned. Um, and I want to remind her, although she's my boss, that last year our pass average was 85%. So that was, that was <laughs> one of the, the aims that, that I had sort of put for us for, for meeting sometime. And then we actually met it last year. And I'd actually want to say more about that. To me, it's not really the 85% that makes me exceptionally proud. I think what is amazing, and people will agree with me as a remedial teacher and as our mentor, um, she knows what happens in a lot of the schools, in private schools as well as in state schools. And before I start a state school, I have two things. A student is sick with the fuck. He will not take the fuck away from him. But he is the school is bang that gaan hulle um, saag sy vir negatief beinvloed en hulle raai die student vriendelik wat mens gelijk staan aan verplig kan noem aan om die vak te los en om een alternatieve vak te neem. As dit nie gebeur nie in graad 12 en die student het nog steeds daar die vak, dan word die student gedeeregistreer as een student van die school en word as een onafhankelijke kandidaat vir graad 12 geregistreer. So so daar die kind nie die vak slaag nie, gaan die school nog steeds deur en sê ons het 100% slaagsuiver. Want Arim Saro is toe nou nie meer onder die schoolse naam ingeskryf nie. I'm going to repeat it in English because it's so important. In many of the states as well as the, some of the private schools, if a student is not achieving to the school standards that they would like um, associated with their matric results, they kindly request, and the kindly request sometimes becomes in force a subject change. Also, if they don't do that, if it's in the matric year and the student is not um, at achieving at a level where they feel that, it, that there's a chance that perhaps the student may fail a subject, they deregister the students from the examination body and register them as independent or private candidates. In the old days, we used to talk about a B candidate. It was either A, you threw the school, or B, you were an independent candidate. And that means that should that student excel, he excels on his own. Should he fail, he fails on his own, and it is not reflected in the school statistics. That is not a principle that Brainline applies. So our 85% that we are proud of, includes the results of many of the students that we have that have severe learning disabilities, that have in some cases severe emotional problems that they are struggling to cope with, as well as students who are taking subjects that may not necessarily for them have been the best academic choice, mm -hmm. but which for them is a good choice because of what they want to do and where they feel they don't want to change their subjects. And I think that is a very important thing as well, not to look at the 85 and say, not as good as some of the school's 100, but wow, that includes not pushing any child to change any subject ever, mm -hmm. other than when, it's in, um, when the request comes from the parent and the student side. I think that's to me very important that I just wanted to mention. Something else that came out of Colleen's discussion was the parental involvement. Um, as a teacher who's been in teaching for many, many years, um, all the advice Colleen gave you about being um, involved with your child, alles wat sy gesê het, of wees, wees betrokke by jou kind, as jy besluit om te thuis school, is rechtig die selfde wat ek vir a ouwer by a school ook wil sê. Ons dink by die keer kind wat in a school omgeving is, um, is, is onder genoeg leiding op sy eie voete te staan, hulle is nie. Hulle is nie, dit is betekker vir hulle is ook om achter te kom um, wat hulle alles gemis het en dis baie keer waar ouwers dan by a ouwer had kom, parents get to a uh, parents evening and are shocked to hear certain things have been happening a whole year and they haven't known about them. So I think that parental involvement, if you're an involved parent, you're going to stay an involved parent. And perhaps if you haven't been as involved, I think all of us have really looked at our lives with COVID and realized what really is important. And I'm going to try to keep my new sort of resolutions. I know it's difficult when, when work gets in between, but I do think that um, that involvement, whether you decide to come to Brainline or not, 
is something which one should be really looking at with these kids. And then before I answer the other questions, I want to go back and I want to ask Colleen, because she mentioned to you now about Diabolt who got a good mark. What she didn't mention to you is that Diabolt wasn't with Brainline until very recently. So if there's somebody who can say what it feels like to be a mom in a house with a child who was not with Brainline and came over to Brainline now and what it's been like for him she knows what it would be like because her two daughters were with Brainline. But who knows what it's like to have somebody who came over from a government school in the high school now? It's Colleen. And Colleen, I think you have a deal with her. But I think it's so important to see that here is a right child who has not done it. And how did he do it? I agree with you, Sam Karen. Um, I think the biggest challenge for me was it possible to say, do, 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 en klap. Maar ek dink die grootste uitdaging van sy kant af, the biggest challenge from his side, was to come to the point where um, he realized that this was actually in his own interest and that he would need to take charge of whatever he is supposed to do. And there's going to be nobody who is going to resp take responsibility for whatever he needs to do other than himself. I would run into the room and say, okay, where are you? In the first two days, I would um, help him to put up a work schedule. And lo and behold, he discovered that he only had 10 days before he was due to start his exams. And he was flabbergasted and panic-stricken and completely anxious until he realized that if I actually sit down and if I plan my day and if at the end of the day I could report to Colleen I have been through four online classes and I've completed two tasks. And Colleen would say, wow, that was a good day. That was motivation for the second day and the day after and the day after that. And now I don't even talk to him about what have you done today because I know, I can see. I see him sitting in front of the classes. I see him printing out his tasks. I see him making summaries. So I know he's okay. But still, we have a conversation while I'm making dinner at night. How did you do? What was difficult? What did you find easy? So that I can keep tabs on what does he have issues with, that I, so that I can jump in and assist him whatever needs to get done. And one of the things um, that Liesl and I are planning, Karen, as well, because of the adult and everybody else who is currently and recently enrolled for grade 12 is, we're planning a weekly sessions for all of our new grade 12s where we're going to not only psychologically support them, but also on project management, work management, managing anxiety. And Liesl, maybe you could just take a minute to talk about Friday sessions with Tanya, um, so that everybody who listens to this conversation can also know about that. Okay, okay. Um, I'm the brand on mentor, as mentioned earlier on, I'm a remedial teacher, so I can say I'm in the year and own advice that is, and my passie is rarig on studenten and ons Leerlinge. Um, Colleen het net verwees na ons Friday sessies, as jy just referred to our Friday sessions. We recently launched um, um, Friday sessions for our students with a qualified psychologist um, where she actually gives them tips on how to deal with stress. Um, so she deal with their ideas, how to deal stress to hanteer. We had a session on COVID-19, anxiety, stress in my studies. We had a more weer sessie wat hy gaan oor examen stress in whom that time is. I'm really excited about that. We look for different opportunities and ways to support all our students. And then there's also a question for Lebuchan. Do you deal with remedial kits? Indeed, we do. Um, I will send you my email address right now. Then if there's anything specific, it also differs um, with regard to the degree of remedial needs, but we are always more than welcome and willing to say, assist and help our remedial students. Okay, Karen, there were... Some Before you get to me, don't you just want to also, because I know, see there are a lot of the junior school people around, don't you just want to give them a little bit of, of how you, the new things that we've introduced um, in terms of the juniors as well, and interaction for them, because we've now said that their, their classes are, are slightly fewer because the parents are more involved. I just want to tell them about the Monday morning sessions and so on as well, and the fun sessions. 
along with Khara, who is the coordinator of the junior schools, the Salman Khara, it acts like um CSIS for um junior work on to be. Um, I split them into two groups. So there's a grade R and one group, and then a grade two and three group, and also in the different languages. So the Afrikaans are connected to the ISCC. Twenty minutes per morning, or even for each group. But it is rare. Jeffrey, I can tell you news from Jeffrey. They tell me I'm going to go to Jeffrey with Jeffrey again. And I really want to share this with you. And I want you to know what happened to me over the weekend. Oh, it's my dad's birthday, and we're going to bake a chocolate cake. And um, all our students crave the interaction, and they absolutely love it. For grade three up until grade six, are also launch sessions. That's all called um, brain games. So brain spellikies. So it's on Zoom. Um, different games and different ideas. They do scavenger and scatter yachter and um, guided drawing. Tomorrow, the moms don't actually know it's happening yet, but they are making Mother's Day cards before the upcoming Mother's Day this weekend. So, more is those says he will find by my and score. And as more mothers talk about this fella. So, we really do try and um, arrange quite a lot of interaction where they also get to know each other. I was a quiet participant the other day um, where they didn't know I was listening in. And I, they would actually start taking, taking, chatting to each other. Hi, oh, my name is, where do you live? And I go from the Via Northland Bada. It's really nice to see how they actually start to blossom and how they want to make friends. Although it is virtual and online, they really appreciate all the friends that they get to meet in the sessions that we arrange for them. Okay, Karen. Okay, great. Let's run through some of the other questions that we still left. Um, I think that one's covered, yeah. so we can go past that one. Um, there's one about accreditation for university. Very definitely, yes. Um, the reality is that the minute one has a um, Umalusi National Senior Certificate, um, that senior certificate and the level of achievement in that certificate decides whether or not you will be accepted at specific universities. So anybody who ends up with one of those will indeed. I think what is more important even than that is to say that what the success rate is at university. And perhaps what to understand, I've seen a lot of talk on the Facebook groups as well. Mm -hmm. Liesl's also mentioned it to me, that parents are comparing what is the difference between CAPS and IEB and Cambridge, for example. Um, the CAPS curriculum is the basis. The IEB has uh, permission from Umalusi to deviate a little bit from the CAPS curriculum. So some of the requirements um, are changed a little bit. Some of them are set a little bit higher. Some of them are set differently. Sometimes there are small things that are left out and small additions that come in. But before the IB can actually have their own curriculum, which is then put out in the subject assessment guidelines, they have to apply to Umalusi to have that approved. So in most subjects, we have for grade 12, a very specific curriculum to follow for the IB. Some subjects very similar, some slightly more different to what the CAPS curriculum would be. So the content doesn't differ that much, but what differs is how the content is approached. If one looks at the Cambridge curriculum, everybody, no matter where you look at it, everybody will tell you that somebody who has passed their A-levels, they, they're going to make it at varsity, and I fully agree, and it's about the thinking processes that come into it. AS-levels is about the same as our matric. Um, A-levels is a little bit sort of like an in-between year between matric and, um, and first year university level. Um, IGCSE, the international GCSE, that is very similar to a grade 10 level in South Africa. Although depending on some of the IGCSE um, subjects and the combinations one has, you could actually go to university with some of the IGCSE subjects, but you will not have nearly covered what you will have covered if you've done the South African grade 11 and 12. So the important thing here is to understand where the difference comes in and where the similarity comes in. And if one can put it this way, I don't think the IB will like me saying it, but it's as though the IB looked at um, the CAPS curriculum and then went, went and looked what is happening in Canada, what is happening in Australia, what is happening in the UK, and specifically in the top schools and top curricula in those countries. And by looking at how they approach the content, not the content, the atom is the atom, but how I address the atom can be very different. And that is where the difference comes in. So the IEB plus a verschrikkelijke woordpremie op begrip 
into person that place a very high premium on understanding and application and um, even to the higher level eventually of synthesis so the IEB for a best example I can give you of where the difference comes in um, ons het allemaal ergens op een stadium al was het net tot op graad 9 die oud staan het 7 we probably all had life sciences biologie soos het toegenoem was op een van een stadium Jong en ek kan onthou hoeveel keer het ek geoefen om een springkaan te teken. En elke een van die achter deelkies van die springkaan, dat ek die rechte oud deelkies soveel, so dat ek het nou nog waarschijnlijk sal kan teken. En wat op aarde het dit my geld? Ek hoef rechtig nie vandag nie springkaan te teken nie. Wat wel belangrijk is, is om te verstaan hoe kom goed gebeur. So by biologie en, en die staatscurriculum van CAPS, sal daar van die kind verwacht word, teken die neer en benoemde, teken hierdie deel van die brein en benoemde. Die IB sê, wat maak het saak of ek om kan teken? Wat belangrijk is, is om te verstaan hoe hy werk. So hulle verwacht van my om te benoem, maar hulle gaan die skets van my gee. They're going to give me the diagram and they're going to ask me, what is B and what hormone is released by C? What would the effect be on whatever if um, the hormone released by C was in excess? Now, weet jy, but die mense sê vir die IB is moeiliker. Ek dink nie, dis moeiliker nie. Ek dink dis lekkerder. Want dis lekker om iets te verstaan en soos die story te kan leer, eerder as om die verskrikkelike papagaai feite te kan leer gee. En ek dink hier gaan lees al met my saamstudent het baie, Soms sê met baie studenten met leerprobleme, is gemakkelijker om ietsie vir my terug te verduidelik, as om net een lijstfeit vir my te, te moet opnoem. Um, so it's all about the explaining and the understanding, rather than just the application part. So the universities love students who come from an IB environment, van dis precies wat op universiteit gebeur. Daar is net geen nut op universiteit, om in te stap en te sê, ek kan feite soos die papagaai neerskryf nie, want niemand vraag ooit weer vir jy so vraag nie. So die IB leer jou, en ons doen het daarom geleidelik van kleins af tot begroot, om hulle te leid daartoe om vraag te kan antwoord wat toepassings vraag is. So the application becomes more and more important as we go along, and yes, not only does going through us allow university entrance, but the IB students um, really excel at university annually at our conference for the IB. We always have somebody from um, universities. The last two, three years they've been from the University of the Western Cape, from the University um, of the Witwatersrand. Surround. We've had people, we've had so many people come in and tell us how those students excel that come from the IB. So, rechtig, ja, met a geriste hart kan ek jy sê, a kind wat by ons deerkom en goed doen, gaan deerkom en goed doen by die universiteit. En so met terwijl ek het so noem, um, skole spoog graag oor hulle topstudente. Verlede jaar het ons a sien gehad, he had seven distinctions through us. He took an eighth subject, which is not available with the IEB, so he was allowed to take that as an additional subject through the DBE. Normally you can't do the combination, you choose one exam body, but specifically for um, ad maths it could be taken that way and he ended up with eight distinctions in the end and he was accepted as a young matric boy he was accepted to study medicine at four different universities in South Africa so if anything speaks for the yes it's what happens in real mm -hmm. life um, our top student other than him had seven distinctions as well and I think three of those were, were high mm -hmm. 90s so yes that's absolutely possible for those students um, can they do two grades in one year? Um, the two grades in one year is debatable. That is something which would be discussed with Liesl. Um, in certain areas, depending on the age of the child and so on, she'll talk to you a little bit about the two years or two in one year. Um, the exams going, I think you're probably talking about that. And then the costs will get back to right at the end and we'll just mention the costs. Liesl, do you want to talk about the two grades in one year? Um, I think cases like that, it's better to individually email me as each case is significant and different. So I don't want to address that as an overall. I will send you my email address and you're more than welcome. Then we can chat and we can organize our own Zoom where we can actually discuss the options. 
the one thing we do have is what we call compact because we very often then have people who have not had the opportunity to complete their schooling um, and as adults want to come in and do a matric. Now it's important to remember that the matric or the National Senior Certificate is a three-year course. That is why grade 10, 11 and 12 is sort of a package deal. But if we have an adult um, who would like to get to that matric sooner, what we can offer them, but that person must already be um, older than mm -hmm. 18, they can then do grade 10 and 11 in one year, should they like, and then do grade 12 separately. So that is definitely also a possibility. Um, we'll talk now about, okay, the syllabus. I think there've been a number of questions about coming over to us. Um, as I've already said, we would not enforce a student to write an exam right now unless they felt they were ready, even if they were just ready in certain subjects. Um, we could also have you allow your child to write the exams mm -hmm. to see as a measure um, how they measure with if they've covered the same work already. And then thereafter to exclude those marks so that they don't count to the final um, report because we know that they're coming in now. So we are flexible on that as well. Um, and then should they join us um, at the end of a grade 10 year, they would then go across and start with grade 11. Um, here and there, there might be some work that would have been done in the IB curriculum in grade 10 with us that wouldn't have been done at a school. And that will then be caught up during the course of the year by the student. What our teachers do is they tell them what is still necessary. We always give them an indication of what prior knowledge is we need. So I say all that what are for kennis is nodig and dan kan hulle dit dan in hul um so is nodig en ons sal hulle laai maar hulle gaan dit dan self um essential in hul. Um daar was 'n vraag oor die internet spoed. Nou ek het soek dis en deur hier vir ons internet manne gevra so dat ek dan nie vir julle 'n verkeerde antwoord gee nie. Want ek dink as ons so by sulke tegniese goed kom dan is dit nogal belangrik. The internet speed I think is something that is actually quite important for us. So what Fadi has said to me is firstly, the main problems that they've picked up with clients who've had a difficulty with um, Zoom, et cetera, in the day. We specifically at the moment are using Zoom because it is one of the applications that uses the least bandwidth and allows for a slightly slower speed. Um, something like, for example, a Skype um, video call uses a lot more bandwidth. Um, and therefore uses more data and it needs a higher speed than Zoom does. So whenever one looks at a platform to use, we will always in future, if we do change from Zoom, it'll again be to something which doesn't require too high a bandwidth and speed. Um, what he does say is that they always suggest to clients that they have all their Windows updates or Mac updates set to run at night after 12. Um, which makes sense because a lot of data packages have um, nut owl bundles. So it helps cost wise, but also then it doesn't run in the background in the day. You think something's wrong, but actually it's running on updates. And then the other um, information that he has given through to me, um, I'm just going to read it down here. He says uh, Zoom recommends a minimum of 1.5 megabytes per second but they have found that that is a little bit low. So they would always suggest that you have approximately two um, megabits per second. And then obviously the higher, the better quality. What we also do allow then of course in classes is that because it's important for the student to see what the teacher is doing, because you might see me as the teacher up in the little corner and the rest of the screen is going to be um, like a whiteboard that I'm teaching on so that you can see, or it might be a slideshow I'm using, whatever resource I'm using. What we then also say is put off your own video so that you don't stream your video to us then um, to save a little bit of your internet speed and then allow the download to you to be a little bit faster but at least then a minimum um, of two. And then the amount, it depends again on the amount of streaming um, that is going to be taking place. Um, I think at the moment, one of the options that a lot of our clients are using is the rain data. So if rain does cover in your area, not the 5G, not because I think 5G is going to do anything to your health. I'm a scientist, so I'm definitely not going to say it's going to affect your health, but for the mere reason that the 5G isn't stable enough yet, there are not enough towers 
um, to give out stable speeds. So the other RAND data is working quite well because I think you pay 250 RAND a month roundabout diesel. Yeah. And then you have uncapped during the day. So that type of thing is, is ideal as well. So I think that for Antwoord misschien die vraag. Um, ons sal terugkom na Liesel, maar leef, miskien dat Colleen hier een van spaan plek. Oh, Colleen, die een oor die registratie by die departement. I'm net unmute. Dit is een vraag wat baie mense my nogal vraag, ja. Um, op hier stadium, soos wat die Sasa weet, South African Schools Act uh, voor, of voorskryf vir ons, is dat alle leerders van schoolplichtige ouderdom, ouderdom 7 tot ouderdom 15, of graad 9, wat een van daar ook eerste kom, moet registreer vir thuisskoling, om te kan thuisskool. The problem that we have at the moment is the practicality of it. Um, we do expect that learners will migrate into the brain line system. We hope that they stay with us at least until the end of the year. But we are cognizant of the fact that they might want to return to their schools before the end of the year. So we know that that is a reality. So registering with the Department of Education for only one or two months might not be practical because your application is lodged with the section in that specific district of the Department of Education. And then the head of department is supposed to answer back within 30 days, whether your application has been accepted or not. And currently, as we stand in South Africa, almost all children, I don't know of any children who are in schools, Almost all children are homeschooling anyway. So I'm not quite sure how that conundrum is being um, navigated at the Department of Education and whether one should even bother with registering at the department just for this year. However, it is my duty to inform you that registration with the department is something that one is supposed to do. So what's my recommendation? Um, if I have a child in the age gap between seven years and 15 years, what I will do is first of all find out where's my departmental district. Contact the district, of course you can't go there. Contact them by email or phone if they are available on phone. Find the forms, fill in the forms, submit the forms. And the reason for home education that you would put down on that form is Lockdown, level five, lockdown, level four, lockdown, level three, or whatever you feel is the reason pertinent to your application. Submit it to the Department of Education and then see what happens. If they reply to you, I don't think they will reply ever to you in these circumstances that we're living through at the moment, that your application has been unsuccessful. It cannot be unsuccessful because all of us have to do a home education at this point in time. So that is the long and short of what the law says and that what I would recommend people do at this point in time. Back to you, Lisa. Um, thank you. Thanks, Colleen. There's the next one. We'll also follow us on that. Um, who work the book in your work? Who are the Was a part of book up and that also joins in on another one. How does it work? Um, you'll be seeing mail students, ear posts, and the work to deal in talk, and maybe you can tackle that as a combination. Carolyn, with pleasure. Yes. Who work the book in the work? Who are the mail all the work? Or must we also part book up? This is the lacquer of brain line, young. Um, ons het vir jou een platform geskep. Jy gaan net bloot in op ons platform en daar gaan jy sien waar is die klasse wat jy gaan bijwoon, daar is die hele werkskalender vir die jaar en dan is daar in elke termijn het ons vir jou een area kie waar ons vir jou wees en hierdie termijn moet jy hierdie take doen. Daar is een skakel waar jy die tak aflaai en dan gaan jy omdoen by die huis op papier en dan gaan jy op een nieuwe skakel wat recht onder die eerste enige is, gaan jy die uh, vraagstel wat jy dan ingeskandeer het en gebaar het as een .pdf file, gaan jy vir ons weer teruglaai. En daar het jy al jou harde werk klaar gedoen. Dan begin ons harde werk. En dan vat ons die taak of die toets of wat ook al jy by ons gedoen het en dan gaan ons omerk. Ons gaan mooi kyk hoe lyk dit. Ons geef vir jou memorandum en ons geef jou jou gemerkte legger terug, so dat jy kan sien wat is die foute wat jy gemaakt het, so dat jy kan verbeter. So jy gaan nie vir ons goed as e-post terug nie, jyne terug nie, jy gaan nie vir ons goed dier pausnet stuur, jyne terug nie, jy gaan bloot op jou 
profielopbrainonline.com gaan jy alles haal wat jy nodig het om te doen en daar gaan jy dit weer vir ons teruggeen. Kom ons praat bykie oor die boeken. Dat is twee maniere wat een mens boeken kan kry. Nou, as alles goed gegaan het en ons was nie in ons lockdown soos wat ons op die oomlik was nie um, en ons kon nog boeken bestel en iemand kon vir ons een pakkie stuur, dan kon een mens gewone boeken gaan koop het op die lijst wat ons weer gegeet van die aanbevole boeken wat ons weer vraag om te gebruik. Ongelukkig of gelukkig op hierdie stadium kan jy die meeste van jou boeken online kry op ons reader. Met ander woorde, ons maak vir jou jou boekies beskikbaar, waar jy bloot een toepassing aflaai en dan gaan jy jou boeken oopmaak en dan kan jy online sien. Die lekker van ons reader is, jy kan dit ook druk. Ek beveel altyd vir mamas en papas aan hoe nou nie alles gaan druk nie, jy moor seker vrees op baie papier. Gaan druk nie die goedjes wat vir jou belangrik is en die rest van die goed kyk jy op die skerm. So, online op die oomlik is die makkelijkste oplossing, dit is die beste oplossing en wat online so lekker maak is, jy het amper onmiddellik toegang tot beide jou boeken en jou taak en werksopdrachte. Maar as jy nou by Breinlein inskryf, wat sê die advertenties op die TV altyd, but wait, there's more. <laughs> die wait, there's more is, jy kry in elk geval die hele eerste termijn. So jy kry al die bronne van die eerste termijn, jy kry al die oud taak wat al reeds afgehandel het, wat al kinders klaar gedoen het, al die oud memorandums, so jy kan al die goeders mooi gebruik om hersiening mee te kan doen. Ek hoop, Carolyn, dat ek jou vraag daar geantwoord het wat die departement betref en die boeken en die werk. Dankie, Colleen. Um, ek dacht, Laila, jy het een vraag gehad oor, is die, die dochter is daar in groot neergesilde hulp bezig vir haar met vaak Jesus. Dit is ook wat my rol inkom. Ek is meer as praat en ek is mal oor my studenten te help met vaak Jesus. So we do help with subject choices. And as we are not experts in all fields, we will um, can also help with the recommendations to um, educational psychologists. Also, we can also help with the recommendations to educational psychologists. We can also help with the recommendations to educational psychologists. So we are more than willing to help. So, ja, Leila, we can also help. Karen, there was a question what did you have to answer? Um, where the English in where well, uh, Reina is English Afrikaans medium. Now we're intending to add other basic African languages, even if only for learning without the intention to master the language. I think that's something that Colleen actually would like to answer. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm going to give you the, the rundown because we're running quite late now. And should you want more info, you can email Colleen, I'm sure. Um, we have looked at this uh, numerous times. Um, I think we would very much love to do so. One of the problems that we have is in junior school to be able to find um, the resources to make it as lang as something where one can learn the language if you have no prior knowledge of the language and also if you have um, nobody at home who can actually read, understand and explain. All the resources we could find are only in the African languages. They don't have the English and African part combined with them. For example, we tried it, we started it with Zulu, uh, Zulu, and I was very excited thinking, yes, I always wanted to learn Isizulu from my dad, never did, he's passed away, and now it's going to be my chance. And I picked up the first grade book and said, oops, there was not <laughs> one single solitary English word so I was totally lost. I didn't know what I was looking at. I couldn't even associate with a picture because there were no lines showing me which words matched which parts of the pictures. Mm. So it's a very, very difficult thing to, um, to find content for and then also to find people with, with a love for both online teaching as well as then the languages and the skills. We really struggle. They're scarce, scarce, scarce. Um, then we've also had it at um, the high school level. Unfortunately, the level of um, interest has not been able or has not made it a viable option for us at this stage. But it is something that I think we will re-examine in future. But at this stage and in the now immediate future, we've actually got our last group of grade 12s doing Isizulu now. And if I look as though I have a headache, I think today mm -hmm. is the Isizulu day for that headache because it's really difficult um, to find people to really support them well. So that one is a, a wish we could and we'll reinvestigate, but for the moment, really difficult to handle. So nog een dag. Oh, ek gesê daar was goed oor die prakties gewees. Um, wat ons doen met die prakties, what we do in the practical subjects, for example, art and consumer studies. 
Um, let's quickly run through the idea. In terms of art, they work at home. Um, for kids, work hulle by your house, baie daarvan, it can be graag 12 jaar moet op video opgeneem word, en as dit nou nie lockdown is nie, dan sal hulle finale graag 12 kids werk, sal dan gedoen word by uh, hulle kids onderwijzer of tutor, wat dan die werk by hulle hou, en dan afteken elke sessie, en die hoeveelheid tyd wat daar aan spandeer is. So the art will normally be then done at the, the art tutor. This year, obviously, that's difficult because of lockdown. So a lot of this is being done at the home, but this then has to be locked away at the end of the sessions and the parents are signing off, and there has to be video um, evidence of what they're doing. It's also happening at the other schools now. Um, for subjects like physical sciences, we use online um, simulations, which are awesome because we actually get results that we can really look at. You know, it's great to say, wow, I held a test tube in my hand, but if I didn't mm -hmm. have the opportunity to really get the stuff to work in the test tube, or if I was doing um, work with trolleys and pulleys and they weren't frictionless, well, then it's so disappointing because your results are meaningless. They're awesome apps at the moment. Um, Fit, uh, University of Colorado stuff that they've made available is great. And of course, now that America needs this online so much as well, they're just investing more and more in that. So we have permission from the IB to do even our grade 12 um, practical sessions for physical sciences um, as simulations, which we then do. For the grade 12 lines of sciences, right up to grade 12, they can all be done at home. And mostly then they're not expected to do them, but we then give them the photographs to show what the outcome would be of these experiments. Again, the IB places an emphasis on the experimental process. So the IB type now, you get in scoplica ownership. Verstaan jy hoe kom jy die experiment doen? Verstaan jy wat het beteken dat hierdie proefbuis groen geword het en daarie in blau? En nie net jy twee druppelkies ingegooi en mooi, hulle is groen en blau nie. Maar hoe kom is hulle groen? Hoe kom is hulle blau? Hoe kom verskil die diepte van die kleur van die blau? So ons plaas baie... Um, um, claim daar op om daar goed te verstaan en dan gee ons het typisch met foto's. Um, vir verbruikerstudies, net in graad 12, die finale examen by Breinlein in Pretoria. Ons het by ons Montana um, hoofdkantoor, het ons een prachtige kombuis. Daar al die, al die ander word um, by die huis gedoen en weer video um, bewijse daarvan. Only consumers grade 12 and life sciences grade 12 and dramatic arts grade 12, the finals. Mm. Um, in September in Montana, Pretoria. Okay, thanks, Karen. Then just the last, but maybe you can just repeat. You know, that whole who worked at us as the dent now about when I inscribe make the examens. As I now about to inscribe, then praat ons met jou as ouer en jy sê vir my wat jy wil hier moet gebeur. As jy wil hier jou kind moet die examens skryf, want jy kyk na a vak en jy sien op ons online stelsel, dat jou kind al hierdie werk reeds by hulle school gedek het, en daarom voel jy hulle moet die examen skryf, kan jy dit dan doen, jy kan besluit, jy wil dit in drie van die vakke doen, en twee van die ander nie doen nie, want die werk is nie die selfde nie, en jy weet, jy, jy kind is nie gereed daarvoor nie, of alternatief kan jy vir my sê, kan my kind dit skryf, ons vir oogend met een van die onderwijsers wat vir ons kom sê het, hierdie kind wil verskrikkelijk graag die levenswetenskappe examen skryf, maar sy is bang. Sy sê, gaan dit nou tot haar nadeel strek, want sy kom, sy het letterlijk vandag dag een by hom gehad. En my antwoord is natuurlijk nie. Laat sy dit skryf as sy voel sy wil dit doen. En as dan aan die einde daarvan sy besef, sjoe, weet jy wat nie, ek was nog nie gereed hiervoor nie dan sal ons dit vir haar dan uithaal op die einde. Die punt kan op die stelsel leen, maar dit sal dan nie op haar rapport verskyn, as sy in die gereed gevoel het daarvoor nie. Ons sal elke een so um, op hulle eie, sal ons hulle hanteer. Dankie, Gordon. Are there any further questions, enige verdere vraag van enige iemand af? It doesn't seem like it. Thanks so much for joining in. Baie dankie dat jylle vandag by ons ingeskakel het. And in any other questions, you are welcome to come to our e-post this year. If you have any further questions, you are more than welcome to send us an email. Laila, our exams begin um, for grade 18 and 9. We begin the exams um, around 18 May. For grade 12, begin the, 10 to 12, begin the exams already for the next week. But that is also, that is more luister toetsen en um, gevallen studies. Gevallen studies is bijvoorbeeld de oudelijke iets. Uh, um, als daar iemand is wat 
um, sê maar graad 10 tot 12 begin, baie van die vakke het gevallen studies, a lot of them have case studies, if, if you're not in the educational sphere, you're going to say what on earth is a case study, it's a scientific comprehension test. That's really what it is. Yeah. So we normally can tell them two or three days beforehand what the topic is. We might say, for example, it's the um, environmental impact of alien plants. And they will then be able to go to their textbook, read through that, read one or two additional articles and so on. And then they actually in the test get some um, scientific articles and sometimes just somebody's blog, etc., so that they have to learn to sort of look, hmm, this was a mommy's blog, but actually... Um, she's uh, um, she studied botany, so maybe this is meaningful. Whereas this is a mommy's blog, but this mommy is actually um, a neurosurgeon. And do I really think she's mm. going to understand the alien plants and decide whether or not I'm going to use her opinions? Do I keep a good can for student in our sky? The Leister Tutsa is a Leister Begripstut listening comprehension, some of the essays they can start writing, those are the ones that start mm. very early. And then sort of towards the last week of May, then the, the other exams really get going. But the timetables are already out and available. Um, our FAQs are out in terms of assessments. Um, our assessment guide about where do you download, how do you get these assessments, etc. It's all available and all ready for you immediately should you join us. Thanks again, Karen. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We are looking forward to receive all the emails. In Zimbabwe, I don't know om all your e-posts to krijg. Um, pas uit, dankie. Lekker middag, Enjoy your afternoon. Bye-bye.